Hello, my lovely goblins and ghouls, my name is Stephen Hawes, and today we are making another revision of the motherboard for the pick and place. Spoilers, I already have it, and they are chef's kiss. They're chef's kiss. <gasps> Pretty snazzy, huh? Pretty snazzy. This thing is better in like 416 different ways. What's actually on it? Well, I've taken the plunge, the arm plunge. So far, the only microcontroller I've ever used is AVR. If you don't know what an architecture is for a chip, I'll put a link wherever the links show up that kind of describes what this is, but I've only ever used AVR. Pretty much what's in most Arduinos, like the AT Mega 328, Great example, it's a classic AVR chip, but now I'm switching to ARM. Fundamentally, this doesn't mean too much is different. Like, you still write the same kind of code, it just compiles differently. But there's a lot of other things you have to do to get those chips to spin up. You have to use a different programmer, blah, 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 blah. So I'm quite unsure about a lot of this. The chip I have on here is the STM32F407VET6. If that's right, I'm gonna be stoked. It's no joke. It also has like a million different peripherals in it. Like it has four UARTs or something crazy or like five or six actually, it's a lot. It's got native USB, just like the AT Mega 32U4. It's, it's a cool chip. It's got a lot of stuff on it. All those feeder ports, pah, be gone. Look how much board space this takes up just to talk to the feeders. We are switching to RS-485. Steven, does that mean Ring is dead? Yes, Ring is dead. Ring is very dead. It was a fun exercise, but it's not gonna be good for a pick and place. It's just not. RS-45 is differential, so there's two lines that go back and forth, which means it's really, really good for like electrically noisy environments. It's just, it's gonna be a good call for an environment like a pick and place. But a good chunk of this board is the same. It still has a five volt buck converter. It still has the USB hub in the same configuration. It's got ports for limit switches, six stepper motor drivers, all that kind of stuff. And then a bunch of auxiliary inputs and outputs. I'm really happy with it. It looks cool. It looks really cool. What do you say that we solder some epoxy and silicon packages to this piece of fiberglass? First things first is the USB hub, which I just soldered on. Pretty much the same thing as last time. I did change a crystal to a different footprint just because it was a little cheaper and easier to get, whatever. Pretty much the same thing. So this really should work, but you never know. It's not hot, that's good. Time for the webcam test. Come on, baby. Photo booth. Hey! <laughs> It works! Ooh. <laughs> Great, so we still have the USB functionality. So we can still plug in two webcams to the board and it'll talk back to OpenPNP. Cool, so now that USB is set, power, power. That's next. So something happened with the motherboard after I uploaded the first motherboard video. I let out the magic smoke. I connected the five volt rail from my computer to the five volt rail coming out of the buck converter. Turns out that's really not a good idea. <laughs> My laptop would put out like 5.2 volts and the buck converter would put out like 5.1 something. If they were just a little bit different and when I would pull a lot of current from it, namely when I would like plug in the webcams and then like ask the stepper motor drivers to move motors and stuff, it would be much more difficult for the buck converter to put out a lot of current at that voltage. And it would start to fight my laptop's five volt rail because they weren't quite the same and then pshh, is bad. What I've done now is just separated them completely. Power from USB is completely decoupled from power on the entire rest of the board. Also, the chip I'm using needs 3.3 volts. So I have 12 volts coming in. I step that down to five volts with a buck converter, same one as last time. And then from that five, I have a 3.3 volt linear regulator that gives power to the microcontroller. So I'm gonna get all that stuff 
soldered on, and we'll see how much of that explodes. Mmm, Thurketh. We're making some Thurketh. And just like that, all the power is actually working perfect. If I give it some juice, oh, oh, oh. So there's no status indicator lights for the three voltages on this board, 12, 5, and 3.3. The buck converter is spitting out like 5.27, which I'm super happy with. And it's not gonna fight my computer this time, so that's great. All right, power's done. Hub works. Now, the microcontroller. <laughs> If you had to pick what corner of this chip is the pin one corner, you know how they designate some different corner of the chip is like where pin one is? Tell me, where, which one do you think, which corner? You'd think it'd be the biggest one, right? It's not. The internet is telling me it's not. And I spent maybe about 20 or 30 minutes trying to program this and I was just getting nothing back, no communication. I checked all my connections, everything looked good. And then I realized I think I soldered the chip on 180 degrees backwards. Oh, <laughs> what a flub. I should, I, that's on me, I should have checked that. So now I'm gonna desolder this monster chip and rotate it 180 degrees and then solder it back down. Okay, so I finally have the chip soldered on 180 degrees around with the correct pin one indicator blip in the right place. I've got my programmer hooked up to it and it's called a black magic probe. So I did a little scan and it saw the chip. It sure enough, it showed up. So what's great about the chip that I chose is it has a built-in bootloader in the ROM of the chip that's non-erasable. It is burned into the chip that lets it be able to program over USB. I should be able to just say, upload to STM32, it'll look and find it and it'll barf code onto it. The main thing that this chip is gonna be doing is talking over serial through the USB port for all the communication, all the G code that OpenPMP is gonna to send to it. And I'm just gonna upload a little sketch that barfs out the word test every 500 milliseconds just to make sure that data is going across. So here we go. Let's see, yeah, there it is, sure enough. USB 2.0 hub and an STM32 bootloader are showing up on my device tree in the system settings on my Mac. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. All right, here we go. Come on. Oh, that looks like it's doing something. Is that it? It says done uploading. Okay, I think it did it. Okay, let's try this out. There it is. Yeah. Dude, it does it. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, what a relief. Oh, what a relief. Oh my God. Okay, there are the unknowns. Done, solved.
uncovered. I'm gonna go on a huge soldering sprint and I'm just gonna solder everything else on this board. I love it, I love it, I love it. I know I've done this a few times and I've spun up a few motherboards, but it's always cool. Getting something that I spent hours working on thinking, there's nothing cooler than that. The little script I have on there right now just goes back and forth between turning on a pump and moving a step promoter just to make sure that, you know, it's stretching its legs, all its bare bones are working, and it seems to be. I've been trying for about two hours to compile Marlin to go on this guy, and for some reason Marlin does not want to squeeze onto this STM32, so I still have some debugging to do there, but it takes code. It moves steppers. It turns on pumps. It talks back over serial. The cameras work. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> there are a handful of things that I haven't tried on this so far, namely the RS-485. That is brand spanking new on this. I've never played around with that before, but when we get back into feeders, that will surely come up. I accidentally put the wrong footprint for the MOSFETs on there. <laughs> so look how tiny it is. <laughs> so pathetic on that huge pad. Of course, the vacuum sensor, I didn't even bother populating because it's $18 and I'm going back to the original design I worked on in the last video. So I didn't even bother putting that in there. But the rest of it's good. All the power supply stuff. All right, that's it for this one. I'm actually going to see you in three weeks from today. Not two like usual because I'm hosting the MakerCast. If you don't know, MakerCast is an awesome little podcast hangout thing where a bunch of electronics makers on YouTube hang out, chat about what they're working on. It's a blast. I was honored a few weeks ago on Becky Stern's channel, and this time it's my turn to host. But then after the MakerCast, we'll resume the regularly, regularly, regularly scheduled Steven programming, including some Pick a Place stuff and some non pick and Place stuff. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay fabbed the boards for this motherboard revision and mm, mm, chef's kiss. They're really pretty. They're really, really nice boards. Usually I get matte black with an ENIG gold plating, or at least most of the time. But I decided to go with the green for this one. I want to get a little quicker. They still look really good. <laughs> they really came ridiculously quick. Like I think I put the order in and 24 hours later they were actually shipping to me. It's crazy. I'm slowly starting to bring the pitch that I'm using on some of my components to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're totally capable of handling those more strict requirements that I have for traces and spaces. If you're looking to get some boards, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. video, I was pretty salty about analog circuitry in general. I've since been learning a bunch about op amps. Turns out I was just making some silly mistakes, but I wanted to say mainly thank you for giving me a bunch of advice and helping me get on the right track. And that I think it's generally not great to just completely disregard a whole category of something just at face value. I was very much not doing a good service to what analog is and how much fun it could be. So yeah, thanks to everybody that gave me advice and got me back up on the horse.